as it has already started and it's going to be on map fair rivers fair rivers version 4 so that looks like like this basically they're same as rivers but not really uh, as unfairly spawned as it usually is on this kind of map so it should be much more better for all of the players here we're just catching up with the spectator delay which is going to take some time but we have a time to have a look around the islands right now the first to have a look at is going to be Tatoch as the host of the room in the green who is having quite interesting island with a bit of peninsula into the middle here so he will be the one controlling uh, the, pass the passage to his opponent's island quite a lot as he's going to, uh, to be heading into Lavi Head's main island and he's also facing Winchester. So this might be quite an interesting game between Winchester and him as they will be fighting around this part of the map. And well, we'll see how important is going to be the water in here because as you can see on the sides, on the right side and on the bottom side, or rather left side or whatever you want to call it, you'll see quite a lot of fish in here. And yeah, this is definitely going to be something useful uh, to have a look at and make use of. So let's have a look at the position of the mines here for Ptatoch. Looking at the civilizations also, we see that he is a Mongol. Then we have Setito as Viking, Monaimon is Persian, Winchester is Han, Warrior Mayan, and Lavihet is Viking. So they are going for pretty much the standard uh, composition. Whereas uh, BYTs are having quite a lot of differences. The Persians and Mongols in here. And Ptatoch has a Mongol. That could, be, that could be quite interesting for him. He's definitely showing that he is quite a great player today and leading his BYT team to the victory so far, as they are leading 2-1. And well, is that going to be enough to finish the match? We'll see pretty soon. A big side now have to finish both of these games as their victories if they want to advance further. So they are having the knife on their throat so far, so to speak. But well, it's not like it will be over there or rather above their capabilities because they really, I have to repeat that. Winchester is one of the best one young players lately and he's also pretty skilled in team games, especially with the teammates, teammates all of Lavi Head and Warrior. He's playing with them for four years, literally. And yeah, that could also make quite a lot of difference on some kind of maps. Interesting placement of the mines of the stone and gold. Yeah, three stones right now at the back for Winchester, so he's going to be having quite a lot of them. Quite a lot of the stone, but it's not like he really needs that. Like he really needs that, but he needs the gold, and that's also decently positioned. Three mines, very much secure, no kind of problem. And he has that was for Tadok finishing the dock at the very back, so he will be definitely reaping benefits of the fish here. Same seems to be having for or rather true for blue, who is also going for the water in here. And yep, as you would be expecting, Warrior and Lavi Head are doing the same thing. How's it looking for the pockets? Setito right now, or pockets? Uh, the players that are in the middle, rather. Setito is right now finishing with the wall in, trying to secure this position of the map, another part of the map. On the top, that was very easy wall in for Winchester, a bit more difficult for Tatoch, so potentially uh, Warrior will be having easier time landing, or rather landing, attacking his opponent's island, but this is really the kind of map that it depends a lot if you can if you can control the water, because if you can't, well, you will, you are going to be having quite a hard time going through uh, these shallows and to the other islands. Yep, he has built a dock in the middle here, rather at the bottom, with a dock from Setito also at the bottom. And that's kind of a sneaky one. That's almost uh, as if telling me that he wants to go for some sneak onto the back of the island for a warrior, which would definitely be a pretty great idea, because looking how the island is positioned, or rather spawned, there's quite a lot of darkness for a warrior, as he's uh, spawned on the left side, but on the right there's not much interest in for him going on, so he probably won't be here, and he will have to go for a lot of houses to cover all the grounds here. And yep, it almost seems like such a kind of idea. This position of Doc is really curious, really curious overall. Finishing with the wall in here as well. The middle island is having some extra stone, or rather gold. And even though it's... Oh, it's actually... Oh yeah, it's possible through the red as well. But it's much more closer and much more, much better accessible for the Vix. And I kind of thinking that they should be making a claim on it very soon and building a wall about here. But looking how they don't really know how the map looks like, I'm kind of expecting that Warrior will build the wall around here as well. Yeah, just to be sure, as he literally cannot know what's going to happen here. 
That talk will be the fast to fastest to feudal village by quite some margin. He is at 20 villages, whereas others are going for 22 villages or even more advanced, which is the 25 even. We will be going for possibly 27 advance, we'll see. There's some signaling that they are, are right next to the wall, so that there is absolutely no passage through. Also, second dock at the very back, trying to make sure that she has as many fishing spots covered as possible, and otherwise... Yeah, there's probably not going to be much of a battle on the water here. I wouldn't really expect it, at least in the early stage of the game. But, well, I might be wrong. We'll see very soon what the strategy is going to be for all the players. You can also see that Setito is building yet another in the yet another dock in the middle in here. So he's not even thinking about building somewhere in here, uh, possibly to help his teammates uh, cover the middle. So he's definitely thinking about doing some shenanigans on the right side. And yeah, Warrior should be definitely worried about what's coming his way. I have also heard a stable from Tatok as a Mongol, of course, called Cavalry, and he will be trying maybe to raid, but I wouldn't really expect all that much of a raiding, but more of a scouting. But look at how he's actually building a gate into the middle. He will be trying to penetrate the island of Lavihead, and she has done absolutely no walling. That's kind of interesting at this stage that she didn't put at least a wall here. And this might be quite threatening for her because looking how uh, Tatok is already going for the scout cavalry, he will be having a very nice view of all the islands and of absolutely everything that is happening in the, at the bottom of the map and in Vic's basis. Hmm. Well, well, well. That's quite curious. Looking how Warrior is actually very nicely covered. Uh, Winchester won't be really counting with this being open as well, I'm kind of thinking. So this is going to open a window opportunity for Tatok to go in his base and check out, check it out as well. And yep, he's already in. And I'm really curious why Lavia did not fall at all. Maybe she thought that she didn't need to? But why would she th think so on this kind of the map? Yeah. It's not really ideal and this is really a huge tactical advantage for BYT because the more you know, scouting is basically like a fourth resource, or rather fifth resource here, sorry, fourth in Age of Mythology, but in here, oh yeah, this is right, right, in, right here, and look at how the opponents are not going to be raided at all, this could be quite deadly, this could be quite deadly indeed. Yeah, already two villages down for Winchester, and even though he was advancing with more villages than his opponents, he didn't even have the loom, so that that was why it was so easy. He is right now dropped to just 26 and he's not the best anymore. Your warrior is having more, together with Monaimon and also Datoch. So yeah, he's right now two villages down, which could be quite problematic, especially right now when he's going to be raided on the gold. Well, he won't. That was just in time for Winchester, who noticed. And with those spike men coming in, and it could be just enough here. Something interesting somewhere else. A bit of a war galley here, fun. On the water between Warrior and Setito. So, okay. That's something happening in here. But with the, oh, with the amount of boats for Setito, Warrior will have to retreat. And he will definitely have to wait for something better. He's having two, th three docks. Three docks in here. With Lavi Head having one, three also, but kind of spread around the island. One for here. Uh, one for Winchester. And, oh, that's, that's just a huge amount of scout cavalry. Scout Cavalry, and that's going to be making life quite difficult for all of the Vicks. Yeah, it's really a shame because right, right now she won't be probably able to build any of the walls because of the uh, Scout Cavalry in here. She will be having to send quite a lot of uh, extra spearmen with her, with the villager, and it will mean quite a lot of downtime in the gathering here. So yep, not ideal at all. A bit of a fight also between Lavi Head Yellow in the middle here. It seems like that rather between. <laughs> Well, we had in yellow, they are actually on the same team. So it seems like that uh, Tatok is not doing absolutely anything on the water. And Blue could, it could be saying the same thing, even though right now we see finally a galley. But he is jumping into Castle Age, and that's the reason. And he will be switching into War Galleys, I think, pretty soon. In the middle, or rather between the islands of Setito and Warrior, we see uh, that Setito is doing a pretty good job of uh, basically controlling the middle of the island. And yep, yet again, this opens a very dangerous situation of potential landing in here. And with uh, Warrior finally finishing the wall, because he has seen, rather noticed, that his allies, that Lavi had has kind of failed to, to put up some walls. Yep, she will be having the fun just for herself, and Tatok will be raiding her as much as he can. This market here, I would be kind of thinking that she is prepared to be raiding, or rather, <laughs> sorry, slinging. But she is a pocket. 
I'm kind of thinking that could be a pretty good idea for her. Go for a bit of water, potentially sling a bit to help uh, Winchester to steamroll over, over that oak, as any kind of help would be needed there. As warrior should be just strong enough to deal with any kind of nuisance that Setito puts up against him, as the defense is pretty big in there. But if that oak would be facing an uphill battle against Winchester, that could be the game changer. And yeah, we can see some interesting stuff going on in here. <laughs> and actually from both of them. <laughs> Tato is just waiting here. And the same is true for, for Winchester. But can he actually finish? Yeah, he can because he's fighting just rather and he just against Bangale. But unfortunately for him, this was very nicely defended by Tato. And here I town knows what's going to happen. And those cavalry archers, even though he knows about them, <laughs> it's still going to be quite a bit of a problem. This village is probably not going to go home safely. Yep, that's one gravestone up for Tatoch, but yeah, these cavalry archers are actually going to be quite problematic for him, because even though Monaimon is helping with some knights, uh, they are much more maneuverable and, well, they can do deal quite a lot of damage and especially stall the economy of his opponent, and that could be everything, uh, rather all, that it takes for Winchester to take the advantage and make it count for his team. Abhi had seems to be nicely defended with all those spearmen uh, tactically positioned around the map because obviously uh, Dot Cavalry is not going to be enough against them. Those knights might, those knights might, especially with those extra TCs right now. Uh, but really, I kind of think that this would be a pretty sweet moment for Labi to try and finish a wall around here. As if she did, she would be very safe to do whatever she wanted with those boats. Go for a bit of a raiding on the top, where she needs to kill all this economy for Tatoch. And if she does, yep, that's going to be it. And she will be quite happy with the results in there. Right now, though, she's going to lose to those fire ships. So it seems like that Bivites are definitely thinking about owning the water. As in the middle, of the battle is a bit pretty tense between Warrior and Setito. But without any kind of help from Winchester or Lavi Head, I'm kind of thinking he's going to lose. Because once those fire ships from Blue come in, yeah, that's going to be a bit hard for him to deal with. Yet another attempt at landing. Well, that would better be careful. Because even though the galley is just one here, it's slowly but surely eating at the hit points of this transport ship. So yep, right now he will be at least seen that there's a gate here. So that should be basically telling, or rather he should be telling Lavi Head to build a wall in, her, in there basically to stop that. But still, uh, Winchester is having quite a lot of cavalry archers in here. And if he plays this correctly, he could be denying quite a lot of economy to his opponent. Especially on this, on this gold. Right now, uh, Tatox seems to be thinking that much more important than this gold is this stone. That's slightly interesting thinking, but how he is a Mongol, that's understandable. But he will be needing the gold just about now. So if maybe Winchester can get a bit of raiding going on in there, well, he could still be doing quite a lot of substantial damage. In the middle, we see some war galleys from what we had who has already in Castle Age, whereas Setito is not, and this could be a pretty good battle if Warrior actually joins in, but he is not joining in because he is on the right side, trying to kill all the boats here. And oh, that's kind of sad decision, I have to say, because if he continued to drive, he could have basically owned, owned all the reinforcements that are waiting here, and also the economy from the Red. But right now he's just thinking that Labihet won't be strong enough to deal with this kind of army, but I wouldn't really think so. Because the castle is coming in just now, which means just uh, next minute before war galleys are in, and this should be resulting in pretty much the death of all this navy. And Red will be would be forced to do something a whole lot better with this navy to do anything substantial on the water. Very nicely positioned dock, I have to say, as he's basically aiming to control the middle island and especially these two worlds. And otherwise, let's have a look at the economies here. The pressure for BYT is having 1, 2, 3 TCs. That's a pretty much a standard play right there. Not much interesting. For Tatoch we have 1, 2, 3 TCs. Oh, rather 4 TCs, okay. So he's going for it quite heavily. Winchester is having 1, 2, 3. 3 TCs as well. Lavi Head is at 1, 2, 3. Pretty condensed, pretty condensed, three TCs. Uh, can they actually f somehow stop them? <laughs> well, this is but just basically uh, Labi had <laughs> running around the island with all those fishing boats and trying to catch the, catch the navy of Setito with her own. 
That's a bit of an interesting end, but they might be running around for quite some time. And oh, here we see a bit of a landing from Tatok's uh, transport ship, and he's sending quite a decent army of knights together with the scout cavalry of himself into the attack here. And this could be a bit problematic because uh, those spearmen cannot really do anything against those knights. Well, they will do something. They will do something, but it's not going to be enough, as obviously it's going to be fight of Classical Age units against Feudal Age. Or rather, Castle Age against Feudal Age. So yeah, this is going to be quite problem, quite problematic, and Malavihet is going to lose some villages. He's only at 51, which is not really all that much warrior, 55. Whereas, we see quite a lot of extra, Monaimon 66, Tatok 73, Winchester 70, and Setito 42, so Setito is slightly worse in there. Overall, I would say the economies are kind of similar, but I wouldn't be really all that thrilled about the progress of the game so far, because it's more or less looking like that BYTs are controlling the map, or rather, are the ones setting the tempo and doing the landings, doing the raidings and whatnot. Yep, he's right now, uh, Setito having a pretty large navy, he's having this one flank pretty strong, and also the other strong flank on the top, so if he can join up with the rest of his army, he will be a pretty nasty surprise for his opponents, as even though here, uh, potentially warrior can take his own, not entirely positive about it, but with the reinforcement from Lavihead, he should be good enough, uh, she should be supplying quite a lot of extra boats to the right side, because once they discover all these reinforcements from Setito, they might be thinking that that's not enough, and I would have to be agreeing. Because this is a pretty good army. And I would be maybe thinking that warriors, warrior could be switching into landing. It would, wouldn't be the hardest, or rather worst idea, because losing, uh, looking like, like Setito is actually going basically full water. It would be a pretty nasty surprise to land somewhere here. It wouldn't really be secret. Maybe it would, because it could be engaged, uh, could be engaged in here. Could be engaged in here, into the battle here, so potentially there could be some sneak happening, but I don't really think that's going to be all that true. And with uh, this raiding from blue, together with the green stalled, well, we'll be seeing some interesting stuff coming in uh, very soon, because Tatok is advancing to Imperial Age, and even though he's slightly faster than Winchester, it's still going to be a problem, because as you can see, Monaimon with his knights, and Paladin's coming in very soon, yeah, he's already in Imperial, going for Cavaliers, yeah, this could be a very tough battle, Manguda is together with Cavaliers, or rather, Paladins, tough times, tough times coming for Winchester, who is playing Hans, and will be going for just a lot of Paladins himself, once he advances into the next age. He'll be having, or rather, relying on quite a lot of help from his ally, uh, so Lavihead should be probably helping him very soon, I'm not exactly sure she's ready for that, or Warrior as well, but Warrior seems to be quite happy of going basically full water, where is this, or full water? He's not really going full water because he doesn't have any kind of navy left. And he's going into Imperial Age and he's probably transitioning right now and hoping that he can do something with Setito on the land here. Yep, this is yet another problem for Winchester because he will be facing also some kind of boats from... Oh, this was very nicely played. Very nicely played how to get through. Basically like a petard. And yep, here we go with the army of Mangurais and backed up by the Cavaliers. So Winchester will be signaling for help very soon. And let's see how fast it's going to take, rather how long it's going to take to his allies to come to his help. I'm going to check if somebody's maybe slinging just for the moment. A bit of a from Lavi head into Winchester. Not sure where it happened. But it seems like that we might be getting a GG and this definitely seems like it because there's nothing that Winchester can do against... Uh, Basically, he's fighting Vavesus too, and if he cannot finish this castle, he's more or less toast. And he's definitely not going to finish that against this strong army from both Tatok and Winchester. So let's see if that's going to be happening, or if there's something extra uh, going to be coming up from the big teams. Finish with the extra super from the boats. Oh, this is a nasty table. This is a nasty table. Double on the land, uh, supplied by the extra boats on the water. Yeah. He won't be able to finish the castle. He won't be able to finish the castle. He's missing some 900 hit points, and I don't really think that he will be able to go through because he was basically sacrificing all his, all his units in hopes that he can get up the castle, which he didn't. So that means he lost on both fronts. And oh well, he needs to build all the extra ones that he can right now. Now we had right now finished with the wall, and that should have been finished at the very start of the game. But let's see if it makes some kind of difference. Still, this Mongols 
Hongolian transport ship from Tatoch and well, that's a lot of raiding. A lot of raiding onto Winchester who is losing villages by the throngs and he's right now at 88. Whereas uh, Tatoch is at the 109 and that's a lot of difference. That's a lot of difference at this stage of the game. Even though Setito is just 53. Uh, with the wars from Big Beam Warrior at 74, that's also a big difference. I would be really thinking that the difference be between Winchester and Tatok is much more significant in here. Much more significant, and well, we'll see if this is really going to be making all the difference. Paladins are in though, and they are in faster. They are in faster from Winchester, and he could still make something happen because Paladins are a whole lot stronger. And if he can supply enough units just about now. Oh, come on. I would so love for you to send those villages to finish the castle in here. It's not really all that far away. 900, 900 hit points. That's just a question of few hits with all those villages. Yeah, 86%. That's so fast. Fast build that he could definitely go for it and he would be finishing it. But with this... Ah, uh, with this Captran right now coming in. Yeah, he's going to destroy the castle and he missed the opportunity and he might be ruining it because... And this could have been a pretty good idea for him to get back into the game. But still a bit of Paladins coming in and no Paladins for Monaymon in the side here. This might be still an opportunity for Winchester to make something happen. So let's see on the right side, how's it going in here? Uh, Setito seems to be doing a pretty good job and we seem to be seeing... Ah, a bit of a boat. I was already thinking if maybe it's some kind of landing. But really, Setito is going full water and he's doing absolutely everything he can to stop or rather kill his opponent and stop what is happening here from Yellow. But Yellow is already finished with buildings and barracks on Lavihead's Islands, which is very important at this stage, and he's hiding his ally, Winchester, in defending this. Yeah, those Eagle Warriors are going to be exactly the correct unit. A very nice side build by Monaymon at the very top. But this basically means that they have repelled, repelled a very strong attack by BYT, and they could be taking the battle to their opponents very soon indeed. Uh, even if they lose, even through losing the water, Laviat is doing something, at least about that. She's trying to stall it as long as she can. But, oh, yeah, that's yet another close castle. Can he, she finish? She needs to send absolutely everything in there for the finals on the left. Yep, because if she finishes, she will be protecting her her base very nicely. She has a lot of farms that are in harm's way, and she definitely needs to build this castle save her economy. So yeah, castle is coming up, even though some villages are going to die. And it's just the price for it, but with the castle up, yep, this is pretty much it. And Setito will have to retreat from this position. Also a bit of blue, with castle and stable in here, so that's probably just to defend Setito or help with the attack in there. Help with the attack on my yellow. The yellow is right now basically camped in purpose base, so it seems like to de seems to be developing into some very huge battle of all the players <laughs> on, one on one battlefield. It's the battlefield, and the number of paladins is really growing for Winchester because he's being slung by Lavi Head, and it's really a big difference because I kind of think that Monaymon isn't slung. Oh uh, yeah, he definitely isn't. Just Slavi Head is slinging right now absolutely everything into Winchester, and that could be making a whole lot of difference because Slavi Head is not really needed in here all that much. If she can supply all that many paladins extras, not even those Mangudais together with those paladins could stop that then. But uh, Warrior needs to be doing something in here. So far not, and that's not only doing anything in his home base. He's just building a castle to protect this stone, which he will need. Otherwise, building no, not even building any kind of boats, and well. Oh, this is why. This is why is he's not having any kind of units in there. Because they cannot get there. They are just running here and getting killed. What the hell? Oh my god. Oh my god, what, the, what am I seeing here? Oh well. That's absolutely brutal positioning right here from Setito because he has basically positioned this boat in the hole of the wall in the hole in the wall and he has stopped all the eagle warriors from coming through come on this was some kind of play wow <laughs> well that was something that was something you don't see all that often and that was basically like at least two three minutes without any kind of presence of warrior on the battlefield and even though Winchester is doing quite a good job defending it just by himself he has lost the castle and oh my this could have this war could have been over just like that if all those eagle warriors were coming into the battlefield 
are coming into the battlefield just the whole time, which they aren't. And well, right now though, he's coming in with absolutely everything. They'll be having some managers, and Eldorado coming in as well. Yeah, this is going to be quite interesting. This castle needs to be coming up though. Oh, come on, reposition the villages a bit farther, but it seems like that the Galeons are having range even beyond that. And beyond that, I hear some villagers dying, and that's because a very nice raid in from blue, and he's, having, <laughs> he's building stables absolutely everywhere, all around Winchester's base, and he's doing a pretty good job with that. So very nicely played by Moneymon, and he is killing Winchester just in full. Winchester is right now down to 67 villagers. Wow, 67 villagers. And even though Warrior with Flavi Head are having pretty decent numbers, well, same could be said about BYTs, and they don't lag in the economy the same as Winchester does. So, the, oh my, this is a pretty huge amount of Mangurais at this stage, and really, they are nearing the critical mass, and with the advantage of the hill in here, they might be getting quite happy about killing all of those paladins, but with the onages, nothing might be changing. Because yet again, not finished, just 600 hit points missing. missing. And can they get some good hits in? Well, the castle whip is probably not going to be finished, or will it be finished? Because those Mangurais from Tatoka are doing their job. Spend quite a lot of attention in there, and really, this is just a reap for some. A very nice Mangonel shot, rather, on edge shot, but so far, that's not happening. Those villagers. Oh, come on, help with this DC to the Paladin. Yep. Good job, good job, and if we'll see if this castle is coming up, because if it is, it will be a very important stage, or rather a very important defensive position for them. And with all those pesky <laughs> siege rams coming in, yeah, we see the GG's here, and awesomely played from BYT, it's very well played, and they definitely control this map all around. They knew what to do, and they knew they do, did it perfectly. Setito concentrated on the water, he basically bound two players, Warrior and Lavi Head. And a very nice early radium from Tatoch, allowed by the yeah, insufficient wall in the middle, was basically also very important as it cost Winchester and Laval, but Moneymon not really far behind. Not really far behind. Yeah, this was a bit of a sling here at the bay, at the end, or rather in the middle of the game. But unfortunately for them, it wasn't enough. They did pretty well, though. I don't really want to say that they did badly. They did pretty greatly, but BYTs were simply better. They were prepared well strategically. I have to say this was up to team play. I have to say BYTs played slightly better team-wise, which is a bit surprising because Fix play with this composition for years, but BYTs did have the better ideas in here. So let's have a look at the achievements. The achievements where Tatoch is going to be the MVP if he played really well, but Moneymon not really far behind. Not really far behind. Stats. Yeah, this was a bit of a sling here at the bay, at the end, or rather in the middle of the game. But unfortunately for them, it wasn't enough. Nicely played. Tatoch, MVP of this series, most definitely. He was the one leading all the attacks, all, all the important parts of the games, and he was the player that made the difference. GG then.